Welcome back to JD Art and thank you for tuning in. This week I'm so excited to share with you the wonderful little trip that I've just got back from which was to the south of France uh, to various places but this week's video will be about Saint Paul de Vence. I used to live in Cannes in my 20s and it was great to go back down and see some old friends. My good friend Leona, who is actually South African, invited me to stay with her and whilst we were driving around I said, hey, I'd love to stop by Saint Paul de Vence and she said, no problem, let's go. So here are some of the wonderful works of art that we got to see whilst we were going around some of the galleries. The quality and the level of expertise in both the sculptures and the paintings and the sculptural paintings are just mind-blowing. One of the last galleries I went in was called Bang and Lesson Art and I got chatting with one half of the duo painter team, Louise Bang. She was so interesting and I had to ask her if she would please stop talking so that I could switch on my camera and film her uh, because everything she said was just fascinating and she was so passionate as well. So I'm going to share the little interview that I did with her um, at the end of this video. Sorry for some slight background noise but her gallery was very popular. So um, just to sum up what she said at the beginning because it really was too noisy at the start. Um, she basically explained that her and her life partner paint together. Louise pointed out that a piece can be important to the artist but it has no significance if it doesn't go on into other people's lives. She said that a piece is only finished when it has a viewer. She explained that a work of art becomes organic when it leaves the hands of the artist and then it begins evolving. They really believe that there's no such thing as abstraction. It's all about the interpretation. As you're about to see, they're always experimenting with the idea of how we see and what we see. Um, um, about interpretation and we feel um, that a painting, come in, yeah, come, come on in. A, a painting needs um, to have a viewer, it needs to be out into the world. Absolutely. As I was explaining before. You okay. need to Hi. look at it. Are you the artist? Um, <laughs> so, for instance, this painting, again, has a lot of, this was just finished, this piece. And we work, as I said, together on all of our Yeah. So, especially on the big ones, we'll actually work side by side together on that piece. The smaller pieces, we take turns. But we see it as a continuing discussion a visual discussion. If I could write about what I see, I write it, but I can't, so I'm going to paint it. And I'm going to have that discussion with my partner, with my life as well. And we're going to... It's wonderful to see your... Yeah. But you're creating this together. It's lovely. It's really an unusual concept. Obviously, we also have to follow the, the tenets of painting. So it's not just about throwing a whole bunch of color onto a canvas and seeing how it evolves. It's also about creating a structure of uh, beauty, and I say that very expressly, a thing of beauty and a thing that is finished, of a piece. So structurally and abstractly, is um, has as as important compositional rules as a piece of figuration. So you know there are parts of the canvas that are important that are for instance these are the important parts of the canvas. The corners you have to pay attention to which corners are finished and which ones you leave open for the eye to move through. Yeah. Um, certainly, and one of the things I personally um, 
find very challenging and exciting to how the colors work together. Mm -hmm. And if you then start to find the colors next to each other, how the capel are, are placed in order again to create something that's balanced. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Then the balance should, in theory, be able to work no matter how the orientation of the is. So we purposely don't sign on the front. We have a very little logo on our faces in the corner just to show that we are the opposite of But in fact, a painting should be able to work in the direction if it's, again, of a sound composition. So all of those things go. How long did this one take you to make? Do you know? It's did... difficult to know. Sometimes. I know, right? I know. This was surprisingly quick, actually. <laughs> because it was, it was a very immediate, it was, it was definitely a reaction to a conversation that we were having about the color pink. Huh. So he is convinced that pink is a color that we should use very sparingly. <laughs> well, I believe pink is a very fundamental and important color. And so we were, again, pairing. What do you do with pink? It came out very explosively and very quickly. And you can see that. Oh, I love pink. And pink with red and orange. Yeah, right. Just Which they set like each other off beautifully. combination. Absolutely. Right? Where this has taken literally years. That's refreshing and calming and natural looking compared right. to that. It's just like the opposite almost. And in um, in especially this case, we incorporated a bunch of sort of collage materials. These are our little notions that we have found in you know my grandmother's sewing logs wow. or. Um, bits of canvas when we actually cut the canvas. Uh -huh. um, and, and these little pieces, again, randomly applied, will inform with the video. So they can be... It grows on its own. Yes. yes. Do you, how do you start it? Do you start with a few colours? You say, right, we're going to work yeah. with these colours yeah. and we're just going to see how it develops. And we try to start without thinking far too much. So without over-intellectualizing, without saying, okay, now I'm going to create a painting that is X. Rather say, okay, let's work with, I don't know, in this case, it was... Um, of a light wash and layers of wash in sort of these khaki yellow um, tones that then started to evolve, evolve, evolve. The graphic quality came out rather late in the evolution of this painting, but mm -hmm. we started seeing sort of animal forms. We were, this was painted in Miami Beach where we've been up until the end of last year. So you can kind of have, get a sense that this is a, a very different painting inspired by a very different environment than something like this, which was finished here in Sao Paulo de Bons. Um, and again, How do people react to the, the work that we can see here? Do, do you think people prefer this because it was inspired more by living here, or is, does this go down better, or it's, is it completely know, it's subjective? A, it's completely subjective, and it's okay. so interesting to see what people actually gravitate towards. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, so, and that, in turn, kind of underlines that whole idea of a conversation, right? If you're inspired, if this is speaking to you, then clearly that conversation is continuing. We're having a dialogue. And it's living through us. And it's living through. Yeah. We had a great, a big piece like this. Yeah. It's all greens and foresty and beautiful. And to me, it just spoke of forest. So a guy walks in and he's like, this speaks to me of <laughs> and, and he Okay. Has, which is totally relevant. But he had seen a BMW 3 Series. Uh -huh. I mean, literally so specific in the painting. He had found this as he kept looking at it, kept looking at it. That after he left, I couldn't unsee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, of course, informed my interpretation. Of course, of yeah. And finally, the person who was the painting um, <laughs> has, has also been touched by that interpretation, if that makes sense.
Fascinating. So, I mean, Pete talks a language you know as an artist. And it's That's my only way of expressing. I have some under my arm. I'll show you what I, what I do. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, my friend's waiting, so thank you so much for telling me about what you do. It's fascinating. Thank you so much for watching. That's all for this week. Next week, I'm off to Antibes to the Picasso Gallery. So if you liked this content, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on next week's video. Take care, stay creative, and I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.